So hi everyone, my name is James Bam Boy, um, Chief of Staff of Boston Jima Project. Um, today is our Jima Wednesday, uh, continuing with our theme of reflection um, and learning um, as we organize and build um, together. Um, today we wanted to, we are gonna have, share a space with the leaders from the arts and cultural organizing space um, to hear about some wins, challenges, opportunities that they observe um, while um, sort of stewarding that space um, this last year. Um, and so, you know, we want to make sure uh, these uh, these spaces continue to, you know, develop and be refined. Um, and so really hearing from folks who, who played an active role in them is really, really helpful for not only for the space, but for other spaces that are, um, that are organizing um, under some of these Ujima values. Um, and so, yeah, I'm gonna pass it to um, Abby first or, or Jija. No, um, both of y'all got some stuff to say. Um, Abby, do you want me to go first since you're taking notes? Yeah, if you don't mind, that would be, that would be great. And then I can just build off of what you, uh, what you discussed. Yeah, and I guess just to um, maybe better introduce um, Jija was a facilitator um, this last year uh, for three months, um, um, facilitating our, our micro learning pod. Um, and so they know firsthand um, sort of what that space looked like and the opportunity there. So I'll hand it to you. Sure, thank you so much, James. Um, first, I wanna say thank you to Jima for creating the space. Um, for us to dream in the ways that we want to and create space for other people to dream. Um, so my experience uh, with the three within those three months was just creating a space for folks to imagine and create worlds through writing um, and through visuals. Um, and so I think one of the beautiful things was each session was an opportunity to meet um, a lot of beautiful people who had imaginations or who haven't written in a while or who have written um, or who just needed spaces to explore more of their work or their own thoughts. Um, and we were able to just kind of fellowship and, and share each other's, you know, share imaginations and share worlds together. So I think that was a really beautiful thing. Um, and just the opportunity to create was also really beautiful. Um, and and to, see, to see what people created. Um, I, one of the challenges uh, that I think I came across um, was just not having a consistency of the same people each month. Um, I think each week, each month rather, uh, there were, you know, different people, um, which was, it, it wasn't challenging because I think each workshop could kind of be a standalone experience. Um, it would have been lovely to, to see some of the folks who came um, the first two times at, at the end to share some of the works that, um, that they created uh, um, to be able to meet some more of the new folks that came um, in the last session. Um, other than that, I think that was the only huge challenge. Um, if anything, I, I wish I would have done a better job of keeping in contact with a couple of the folks who um, were in our sessions. Um, and I don't know if there are exact questions that I'm miss missing the answer to, but feel free to definitely fill me in. Um, but those are the only challenges uh, that I think I came across. Other than that, I think it was a beautiful experience to be able to meet folks um, and to create with folks. Um, Are there any questions for me, particularly to answer that I may have missed? Um, I could also share about what the workshop was about, if that makes it a bit easier. Um, I didn't really share much information. I, I guess I'm assuming that everyone knows, but I could also go into detail. James, lead me, God me. <laughs> now nah, my internet is being weird, but no, nah, um, nah, this is great. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, if y'all if y'all have any specific questions for Jija about the space that they held, yeah, feel free to um, jump in, um, and maybe we can pass it to Abby, and then maybe people have some you know things they might offer for both of y'all. Yeah, for sure. Um, so to pull off of what or to build off of what Jija was explaining, I was able to attend, I think two 
of her sessions and um, exactly what you said, I hadn't written in a while. Um, definitely nothing creative, uh, nothing, you know, beyond just like my job and having to be professional or like personal journaling. Um, so it was really fun to have the invitation to step back into that space and do it with people. And we were asked to share what we wrote at the end of sessions, which is always, um, you know, a, a lesson in vulnerability, but whether or not being virtual makes that easier um, is definitely a personal preference. But I found that it was just so cool to hear what people said and everyone was really open. Um, another session we worked on movement and some of the challenges were to express emotion or complex ideas through movement. And again, that was really fun because you're just a small Zoom square and you really got to play along um, and everyone did, which was great. So everyone got active and really involved in it. And that was just a new, different way of, of working my brain. So that was really lovely. And in addition, I also attended some of the micro learning pod sessions from Mercedes Loving Manly. And they did a whole session on blackness, queerness, and transness in storytelling. That uh, those sessions included watching documentary films together. I believe that Mercedes um, defines themselves. Of course, I don't want to speak too much, but generally as a as a filmmaker. So we got to watch small snippets of films that were either created by queer artists or trans artists, or engaging with those subjects. We looked at photography as well, and we had kind of like these micro, um, again, mini learning sessions about those types of artists and had a whole bunch of discussion afterwards. And it was great because the film clips, some of them were, you know, 15 minutes or so. So they were pretty solid. Um, and so there was definitely was a lot to talk about and um, unpack. And again, film is not usually where I go. So that was really exciting. And then otherwise to sort of speak through what Ujima has been up to the last year, um, there has definitely been a lot of bumping up of existing both state, local and sometimes federal, but mostly state and local um, artist grants and funding opportunities. Although that's done much more through Ujima at large, not necessarily the arts and culture crew. Um, there was of course the Ash Ash Cultural Assembly which was an opportunity for artists, creatives, cultural organizers to all come together and set collective priorities and develop practices for shared political power and development. And so what this looked like at Ujima was through grants, through events, um, through convenings, that was September through October. And again, that was another Ujima wide initiative, um, but just being that it kind of came up together with the arts and culture team, there were fun ways to be involved. Besides that, um, I feel like, you know, I've been a member of Ujima for the better part of a year. And, but just beyond um, some of these micro learning pods that have been like quite directed, the arts and culture team has felt to me personally, a little bit lacking in um, action or consistent um, direction, I guess. And not to say that that's a, a bad thing. I just think so much is of course, based on attendance and who shows up. Um, and commitment. And so I know that we are beginning to start to think about questions and having attended some of the other co-learning, um, peer learning from previous member teams definitely doesn't seem like that was just specific to the arts and culture team. And there was a lot of fruitful discussions about ways to make it still feel meaningful, even if it's not consistent. And when we're ready to move on to questions, I would definitely love to start to hear people's um, ideas about how we can, you know, either have virtual creation or if people feel like creating um, art together during each of the art and culture sessions, even if it's a 10 minute sketch period at the start of each one would feel like something would be open to, uh, people would be open to or other ways again for it to feel um, more active and collaborative. Yeah, thank you, um, Jija and Ab Abby. Super helpful um, insight. Um, for folks um, who ha are not, who haven't been part of the arts and culture organizing space, um, any questions, thoughts, reactions um, for folks? Um, definitely want this to be uh, an open space. Um, 
if you guys have suggestions um, to offer. Um, thank you for sharing, Abby. Uh, in response to some um, something you said, I'm wondering what would be um, a clear vision of a direction that you would imagine the arts and cultural sector going? Um, do you have some thoughts on that? I hesitate a bit to answer as, you know, the full director of that vision, I still feel kind of new and I still feel a little bit more like a participant um, than an active director, like, but that would be, you know, a fun role to take on. I personally feel just my opinion that, yeah, again, like something more based in action or using the arts and culture team as a resource, like as bodies on the ground, meaning does Ujima have I don't know, a mural that needs to be painted or do they know of a local arts nonprofit that needs teachers or an artist kind of looking for people to sketch or, you know, like a sounding board for any sort of creative enterprise. Um, I think that seems like a ready pot of like volunteers who are interested that like we could be better asked to do more things if people are interested. That's great. Thank you. And building off of that, if anyone knows of any project, like a particular art piece, art installation, performance, um, a system as a whole, like maybe your local um, planning or your local park board, something like that, or an organization that you know of that you think could use like hands just helps and help and volunteers definitely feel free to let us know that I can take notes and like maybe there's a possible partnership there if people know of, of anyone. Hey y'all this <clears throat> Mars I just kind of walked into the house um I don't really have like, you know, something to share for that, Abby, but I just really appreciate hearing you share that. Um, I'm working the job that I'm working at, you know, we're working to help address digital inequity. So I like hearing like using arts to be more active and in, in something because art speaks in so many different ways. There's so many different volumes of looking at art. And I think if I look at like my own biases, I might think I'm only thinking art might might be a jarring and might not even realize something as simple as just three words put together to get some thoughts going as art. So I, I really like hearing that. Thank you. Yeah, Marsh, thank you for that. And do you think that having a artistic exercise at the beginning of each session again would it be like or could it be a poem a drawing or whatever or maybe just a free-flowing hey you have 10 minutes to work on your craft whatever that is do you feel like that would encourage either you or anyone here in this room to join and participate or does that seem more of like a barrier and you're like i don't know i'm not really ready for that i'd kind of rather just watch you know, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, that makes me curious. I wonder if some folks might get shy and they, they might be like, ah, let me look at it and do it at home. Some folks might be like, you know, let me let me tackle this here. Like you said, you it's been a while that you haven't wrote. So maybe somebody who's like, oh, I haven't been in a space that, you know, I could just freely do this. They might want to do that. So I think that's really like, I think it might just be open to like be more curious of like what space you in and like where we're at when we're or folks at when that's being done. I hope that answered that, Abby. Looks like Louise. Louise, you have uh, yeah. Hand. Okay, yeah. I, I, I would like my thing is more to use art as social justice, and to, uh, I mean, because the the social justice to get people's meaning, and to try to create feeling for other groups. Because look at the prejudice against people on Section Eight. You know, food stamps, 
welfare on, you know, and that. And I'm interested in kind of promoting social justice and showing those people, human beings and their stories. So people can't make an excuse. And it, I mean, I like to have people tell the story, but it's kind of hard to shy. If you want to do it away, that some people can't make an excuse for condemning them and say, if they hadn't done this, you know. And like, I know somebody says, uh, which I got a black person says, it isn't our responsibility to teach people not to be racist, but yet the people educate themselves, but when the people don't know, they have to be educated. You have to give their story and how they feel to try to fit into their needs and, can, and show them. You know, we have to have from where they are to see. And I, that's what I kind of like trying to get the message so people can more or less understand each other and view each other as humans. That's what I like art for. Well, yeah, we did a world with Ace once on climate justice. We started out with smoky things and then we got with an area became clean energy. Thank you, Louise. Um, any other um, thoughts, reactions, questions for folks? I have one more additional question for the group. If the arts and culture team created um, almost like outside of membership work or homework or I don't know, an activity, even if it's just come with this prepared, something that takes five minutes before the session. Do y'all think that if it were you, you would actually do those things? Or does, again, that seem more of like a deterrent than an encouragement? I don't, I don't know. You all, I guess I'll answer. Um, I, I think it would be nice. I imagine it to be maybe like on a newsletter type thing where, there's, you know, there are things that are tailored to just arts and culture, um, whether it be jobs or activities or questions or prompts that people are offering to the rest of the group. Um, maybe that could add on to make, I think you use the word action based. I think maybe that can add on to that and make it a bit more, I don't even know what word I'm looking for, but something that's more like concrete within our group. Um, Feel free to add in anyone else. If... Yeah, hi everyone, Paige here. Um, thank you so much to John and Abby for sharing those thoughts so far. Um, those were great. And thank you, Louise, for adding what you shared. Um, yeah, I think it would be great if um, people were open to this, you know, maybe even sharing something like an artistic prompt to think about or work on via email with the group, um, the folks who are on that member team list serve. And it could be a prompt for them to, you know, create or think about or write something that kind of has to do with arts and cultural organizing. Uh, if people want a way to stay engaged between monthly meetings, that could be interesting to think about. Um, um, beyond that, I think there's a lot of that that happens in the, the micro learning pod anyway. So. Um, that could be another space to sort of dig deeper into those like action-based things. But I wonder um, if, you know, circulating a prompt or something via email would be a good um, intermediary. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, I love the idea of sort of circulating um another sort of engagement tool to sort of in, in, ensure that folks are stay, are staying connected around something um because there is definitely this desire for me for there to, to be for there to be some collective um endeavor um and i don't know what that is um necessarily you know i think it could be just like creating together something. Um, but, you know, I also don't know how much of a, if it needs to have an agenda, you know what I mean? But I think there's something really powerful about us just creating something 
together as a reflection of this time, of this, this moment, um, and see what comes of it. Um, so I think, I think there's also the desire to just make sure folks are um, getting to know each other and just connected and for, so we can build, you know? Um, and so and sometimes that doesn't mean, and that doesn't always have to be directly tied to uh, something that's like um, um, energized by politic in like the biggest ways, you know what I mean? It could be sort of like just a, a loving gesture. Uh, of connection and I think that that's like dope too so I just want to offer that yeah um any other questions for folks as we move um and and also I guess um you know the the micro learning pod you know when we started doing it you know it was really uh an opportunity for there to be sort of recurring like development um, and practice around some like some sort of like uh, cultural practice and um, and work and and I think the nature and, but I guess my point is that I think it, there is flexibility and and sort of that um, three month practice to include um, other other sort of routine practices. Um, and I know one thing that we definitely wanted to make sure was included was um, was a space to like make collective decisions. Um, and that's something we've been like kind of forgetting to do in some ways, um, but um, definitely want to make sure that, that that is something that's included in the, the work. Um, so, you know, so as we were talking about earlier, the group can make a decision to like, do something um, if they choose to, um, and, and and maybe they can we can operationalize that in in some other way too besides these like um, one off meetings, you know. Um, so yeah. Um, any other thoughts uh, for arts and culture organizing? Um, before we pivot to the second part of our evening. I did want to say that I, I do enjoy how the arts and culture um, creates a space for me to meet people with new art. Like I had no idea that Mercedes worked on or was a filmmaker. Um, and I think before that, there was another filmmaker who challenged, who was the challenge to do, who challenged us to do um, short, short videos. So I, I do want to put out there that like, I really appreciate how the arts and culture um, team is really thinking intentionally about introducing new forms of artwork and, and new ways to like to art in ways that you might not even think that you're skilled to do. Um, so I just want to share that appreciation. Cool. Um, if there are no other final um, thoughts, questions for Gija and Abby, um, I'm just gonna say thank y'all for offering your wisdom, insight, thoughts about um, the space. Um, and I hope that y'all continue to show up and like participate, you know, and like support it. Um, it uh, to be whatever it's meant to be, um, but to truly just appreciate y'all for um, stewarding that space um, alongside us, super helpful. Um, so yeah, um, and then a little early, but um, before we pivot into the second part of our evening, which is uh, time for us to talk about, uh, it's time for it's business support, one to um, allow space, um, actually, we'll stop the recording now. Bye, everyone. Hold on. <laughs>